Volume 2. Chapter 11, Falsely Accused. A crowded train, that is the ritual of the company worker. Thank you for your hard work early in the morning. My life's diagram has been completely delayed, but as I said, I'm also taking the train to school today. Normally I walk to school, but yesterday I stayed at Seka's house. Seka Kokono. She is my mother's sister and my aunt. Kokono is my mother's surname, so don't worry about that. I used to live with Seka for about a month when she took me in. My mother and Seka had a big fight in the past because of me, and she was forced to take me in because she couldn't leave me alone. Since then, she would be sad if I didn't stay with her on a regular basis. That's when I had to take the train to school. Perhaps Seka was worried about me, because she was overly protective of me. She tried to buy me everything, but yesterday was a disaster. Seriously. It melted my steel mentality into mush. Yuck Ito, is there anything you want? Like a child? She whispered these words in my ear, but I wondered what would happen to me in ten months if I nodded yes. I'm scared. Too scary. I had to pretend to be deaf. Even though the train is packed, I'm currently sitting on a seat. I had won the game of musical chairs. A faint sense of superiority. The jealousy in her eyes was pleasant. Just as I was thinking this, a new group of passengers pushed their way into the train. The lady standing in front of me. She didn't look good, she looked unwell. I've heard that these days more and more people get upset when they are treated like elderly people, also when people gave up their seats for them, but I wondered if this was the case. However, there was no point in thinking about it. Here you go. Yuki said. Eh, thank you. Lady said. I stood up quickly and gave up my seat. I'm confident in my physical strength even though I look like this. I'm a homecoming club member now, but I used to be a basketball club member. I'm strong on my feet and legs. It's only a 20-minute walk from here anyway. There's no need to be stubborn. In the end, I decided to keep my smartphone. There are some words in my search history that I can't dare to show people, such as 10 months later, so I'll delete them soon. As I was thinking about this, I caught sight of a female student near the entrance. I don't know what's wrong with her, but she's looking down, as if she's not feeling well. Maybe she's holding something back, I wondered if there were too many people in bad shape, but in this crowded train environment, it was probably inevitable. There are probably many people who feel sick, but that didn't seem to be the case. She was shivering as she was pressed up against the wall. Isn't it too early in the morning for you? In the early morning, I think most people are more sleepy than others, but there may be some who are more sexually active than others. I can't speak for others at all, as I'm still in agony over last night, but there's nothing like getting excited in a crowded train. I walked up to her as if I were diving through a wave of people. I open a little distance to observe. I can't do anything too fancy. I don't want to admit it, but I'm sure of it. I wondered what it was like for a grown man to be groping the buttocks of a schoolgirl in the morning. There are too many perverts. I can't help but sigh. It can't be helped. We arrive at the next station. I followed the flow of people, and as I got closer, I reached out to grab the hand of a businessman in a suit. What the hell are you doing? Random people said. The next thing I knew, my hand was being grabbed. I realized that I had gotten myself into trouble once again. Unknown Girl Point of View It was only a short while ago that I received a call from my best friend, Yumi Mikumo. Apparently, she was being molested again. She must be an easy target, as she was molested even in this short period of time before she met up with me. I'll be there when she meets me at this station, so it won't be a problem, but until then, she'll be alone and I'll have to worry about her all the time. In fact, this is how Yumi sometimes contacts me. 
When I see a short message typed into my phone, help me, I get angry. Maybe it was because of this, but Yumi had developed a mild distrust of men. There must be a lot of people on the train, not everyone is a pervert. So why is no one trying to help her? The passengers who pretended not to see what was going on were also an object of blame for me. Now, what to do? It depends on how they respond. If they apologize honestly, there is still room for forgiveness, but depending on their attitude, I may have to consider turning them into the police. If that happened, I would be late to school, but it was also for the sake of justice. The station staff or the police could tell the school what had happened. The train arrived, Yumi always rides in the same car, so I can easily recognize her. So, what kind of guy am I dealing with today? I'm a martial arts student, so my strength is quite strong. First and foremost, as the student council president, I will not tolerate anyone who tries to harm the students of our school. Although we are not at school, we are still on our way to school. This is the responsibility of the student council president, and it is the justice and pride of Mitsuki Kido. That's him. I grabbed the arm of the man who was reaching out to Yumi and twisted it. I was surprised when I tried to see what kind of guy he was. I was surprised to see that it was a student from our school. You, what are you doing? Yukito's point of view. No, it's not me, Yuki said. I don't want to hear your excuses. Are you not ashamed to be a student of our school? President said. My arms were twisted up and I was pinned to the ground. I could have forced myself to shake it off, but I knew it would complicate things, so I just went along with it. I had a feeling this would happen, though, didn't I? I was named as a pervert in the train, and then I was dragged out and pursued. It was a completely bad day. I saw with my own eyes that you were reaching out to Yumi. You better not lie to me. You're so naughty. Yuki said. What the? President said. I could feel the weight on my arm. It was a dignified movement. Perhaps it was her martial arts experience. She was tall and well built. She was taller and fleshier than the other female student who was lying face down next to me. I felt like I had seen her before, but I couldn't find her name in my brain. She sounds like a sporty type of girl, but also something else. A brainiac. If you would have just admitted it and apologized, there could have been some mercy. President said. I can't admit to something I didn't do because it would violate my sense of justice. Yuki said. Don't talk about justice, pervert. President said. I'm not a pervert. Yuki said. Then I'll have to call the police. President said. The conversation was completely pointless. I was fine with that. If I could verify it thoroughly, my innocence would be clear. In that case, it would be the girls who would be in trouble, but I wouldn't feel any sympathy for them if they were treated like criminals. If they suffer for it, it's their own responsibility. So why don't you just call them? Yuki said. Do you really think that being a student doesn't make you guilty? You're a very foolish man, aren't you? President said. I think you're dumber than I am. Yuki said. You're not helping yourself. I'm sorry, but I have to call the police. This kind of person doesn't belong in our school. President said. Oh. All right. Yuki said. The station attendant tries to rush out after receiving the words. Even if the truth comes out, it may be inevitable that I will be suspended or expelled from school. That's fine, but why do I have such bad luck with women? If I get involved with her, nothing good will come of it. Wait, he is not the molester. Lady said. Let me retract my previous statement for a moment. Maybe my luck with women isn't so bad after all. 
student council president point of view. I was surprised to find out that the molester was a student of our school. He seemed to be an underclassman. It bothered me that he didn't show any reaction when he saw me, but I felt a little bad about destroying a young man with a future. However, this student showed no remorse whatsoever. He always insists that it was not him. I was gradually becoming irritated by his reckless attitude. He is a student of our school, which means that if he is left alone, he might meet Yumi in the school. How could Yumi, who distrusts men, bear the thought of the man who molested her being at the same school? She was safe this time, but she might be attacked someday. I can't allow that to happen. I have no choice but to expel this student. Having a student like this in our school is not a good thing. There was no room for reconsideration and I was ready to call the police. You are not helping yourself. I'm sorry, but I have to call the police. This kind of person does not belong in our school. President said. Oh. All right. Yuki said. Now I'm going to be late for school, but I have no choice. If I leave him alone, not only Yumi, but also other girls and other women may be harmed. He is someone who should not be tolerated. Why are there all these people who don't want to help Yumi? It makes me feel very angry. Wait, he is not the molester. Lady said. The words slipped into my ears as I grieved in my heart. Yucky Ito Point of View Hey, who are you? President said. Thank you for earlier. Lady said. It was the woman who I gave my seat for in the morning, looking a little paler. Apparently, she was going to help me. The woodcutter who had dropped his axe into the lake might have felt this way when he saw the goddess. Was there a god here? Translators note what Yakito said is actually from a moral story, The Woodcutter and the Axe. What? I'm sorry. Who are you? President said. I was sitting in front of him, he is not a molester. Lady said. You were sitting in front of him? I saw this man reaching his hand out for Yumi. Why would he, who was in the middle of the train, try to protect her? President said. Because he approached the girl there on his own accord, Lady said. Isn't that what you do to molest someone? President said. No, hey, you remember something. When you were being molested, were there any guys in school uniform around you? Lady said. She spoke to the girl who had been molested, who had barely spoken up to this point. What? I, I. Mikumo said. Remember well. He thought you might have been molested, so he went up to you. He did it to help you. He got close to you just before you got to this station. Do you remember at least a little bit about the kind of people who were around you when you were being molested? Lady said. Oh, they were all adults. I was scared. Maybe it was someone in a suit, Mikumo said. Did you see anyone wearing the same school uniform as him? Lady said. I don't think so. No, there weren't. Mikumo said. What? President said. The senpai who still doesn't listen to me who is still deciding what to do with my arm. The only thing I can do is to enjoy the feeling of her breasts, but it's sad to say that it's not an enjoyable situation. It was a bit rash. You guys almost ruined his life, you know? Not only that, but if it turns out that he is innocent, you'll be accused of being the ones who falsely accused him. You have to be careful, okay? Lady said. Oh no! So, you were trying to help Yumi, President said. I'm sorry. Mikumo said. I don't feel anything even if you apologize now. I'm not sure what the problem is, but I'm sure it's something I did wrong, as usual. It was a mistake to take action. It was a mistake to care about it. 
If I get involved, nothing good will come of it. I'm sure I know that better than anyone, but this is how I always end up making the wrong choice. After all, I shouldn't have tried to help you. Yuki said. I should have just ignored it. In general, if you are being molested, you should just speak up yourself. Relying on someone else, depending on someone else, and having someone else protect you is not going to solve anything. Dash? Mikumo or President said. Can you please let me go? Don't worry. I'm not going to make the same mistake. I'm not going to try to help you again. Yuki said. I'm not going to make the same mistake again. This time, the cause is clear and the solution is simple. From now on, even if I see a woman who looks like she is being molested, I will ignore her, then nothing will happen to me. What needs to change is the person themselves, and the perpetrator who is committing the crime. As an outsider, I have nothing to do with it. Wait, wait. I'm sorry, you're not wrong. What you're doing is, President said. That's enough. Well then. Yuki said. Shaking off the hand of the senior who was clinging to me, I turned away and bowed to the lady. If it weren't for her, I would have been in more trouble than I was. It's no exaggeration to say that she's truly a savior for me. Thank you very much. May I call you Messiah? Yuki said. I'd rather not, I don't feel so good in the morning because of my anemia and today was especially hard for me, so I'm glad you offered to help me. You're the one who's in all this trouble. I'm worried about you. Lady said. Are you feeling better already? Yuki said. Maybe a bit better. Huh. I was going to go to school, but I guess I'll have to take the morning off. Lady said. I don't feel well either. I'm going to go to a coffee shop and rest a bit. Yuki said. Oh, you are going to skip too? Then can I come with you? Lady said. I'm a problem child after all, so it's fine if you want to join, please let me buy you a drink. It's my way of thanking you for helping me. Yuki said. I don't think that's okay, you saved me in the train. Lady said. The returns are too big. Yuki said. While chatting with her, I decided to rest for a while at the coffee shop. She told me that her name was Mionanomia and gave me her contact information and said, if you have any problems after this, please contact me. There are women in this world who will falsely accuse you, but there are also saviors who will help you. If there is a God who abandons, there is a God who picks up. It's a well-designed world. That being said, I don't want to go to school, Yuki said. I'm not going to go to school because I missed the morning class in the first place, although I feel somewhat better. Yes, I'm the outlaw Yakido Kokono. I'm a problem child anyway. I guess it doesn't matter if I skipped school a little. Come to think of it, a 30-minute train ride from here will take you to the seaside district. One of my few hobbies is to go around there for sweets, and there is a store nearby that sells a limited number of 50 tarts a day that has become a hot topic. Hmm. It's settled then, Yuki said. I smiled to myself and started walking away from the school, heading in the opposite direction. This is also youth. Chapter 12, Savory McCrimacristy the limited time edition cake was very tasty. Only the limited edition though. I had accomplished my main goal, but I still had to go to school in the afternoon. No one would think that I would be skipping school and playing around here, hmm. There are many places to go in the coastal area. I could go shopping at the mall, ride the Ferris wheel, or go to the TV station for no particular reason. A trip by myself seems to be a fun way to get away from it all. It is also relaxing to see the International Exhibition Hall without people, which is a change from the festivals during the Oban and New Year holidays. The spring sunshine was dazzling, the scent of the sea somehow lifted up my spirits. 
I gazed at the sea in a daze, waterfalls were frolicking in a friendly manner. As I was watching them I started getting lost in my thoughts, they say that the return rate for lost items such as wallets in Japan is about 60%, but will I ever be able to get my lost items back? At some point in my life, I lost the capability to love. I don't know now when that happened. Was it then, or was it now? I looked back into my memories, but I can't find the answer. I'm not sure if I've lost my way or not. Where is the love I've lost? Will there come a day when I can get it back? After dropping my love, I stopped caring about anything anymore. I stopped caring how people see me or what they think of me. If there is no hate, nor ill will I won't care what they do or think about me. I don't care if someone doesn't like me. I don't care what kind of feelings others have for me, and I don't direct those feelings toward others. But that's not right. It can't be. There was a time when I did have fondness for someone. And now that I've dropped the fondness, I'm not qualified to face anyone anymore. No matter what kind of feelings the other person gives me, I can't give them back the same amount of feelings. No matter how much love they give me, I can never return them. I can't return it, the feelings of love that are supposed to lie beyond those feelings, or the love that they create. I can't return anything. I know it's a terrible thing to do. So, I shouldn't get involved with anyone. At least, until I get back what I lost, I have to stay in the shadows. That's what I think, Yuki said. I don't know why this is happening at all. Contrary to my intentions, strangely enough, there are many people who want to be involved with me. To be honest, it's annoying. With the current me, I'll only end up hurting someone. Suddenly, I looked at my phone. There were several messages on it. I had skipped school suddenly without saying anything. Maybe someone cared enough to contact me. Why not just ignore them? Why try to get involved? It's not a good sign, it doesn't do any good to worry about me. Maybe that's why I'm here now. Huh, Yuki said. My depressive mood returned. By that time, I had no desire to go to school in the afternoon. Classroom point of view. Sorry, is there a Kokono in this class? Kido said. It's lunchtime, and suddenly a visitor appears in Class 1B. President Anne. Vice President? It was the two council presidents, Mitsuki Kido and Yumi Mikumo. Kido, the student president, has had many moments to deliver a speech in front of everyone. She has a familiar face, even to first-year students. I wondered what the president wanted with the freshmen. She is not the kind of person who would show her face to the first-year class for no reason. Sakurai was the one who responded to the questioning. It seems that Kokono is absent today, do you have any business with him? Classmate said. If it's Kokono, he is skipping class. Minida said. Minida's comments also came in. What? He is not here? No, that's strange. He was supposed to be on his way to school this morning. Kido said. This is bad, Mitsuki-chan. This is, Mikumo said. Futashiro-sensei said she hadn't heard anything from him. What should I do? Maybe he just left, Kido said. Senpai, what's going on? Hinagi said. I want to know, too. I've been trying to contact him, but he hasn't responded at all. Miho said. Suzurikawa and Cookie also joined in the conversation. I'm sorry, it's not something I want to talk about in public. Yumi, let's go to the staff room. Kido said. Yes, we have to hurry. Mikumo said. The class went silent as the two upperclassmen rushed out with impatient expressions. The atmosphere in the classroom was dominated by the feeling that something must have happened. I'm coming with you. Miho said. 
Cookie muttered to no one in particular. Some of the students ran after him, following the backs of the senpais. Staff Room Point of View Fujishiro Sensei Sorry to interrupt your break. Do you know anything about Kokono? Kido said. The door of the staff room was opened with great force and Fujiro, who was sitting in her seat eating a piece of bread, choked on it. Cough, cough. What's the matter, Kido? What is it with Kokono? Fujishiro Sensei said. It's our fault. Mikumo and Kido said. Wait, wait, wait. Don't choke. Calm down. What's going on? Fujishiro Sensei said. Have you heard anything from Kokono? Is he taking a day off? Kido said. Ha, huh, he really is a problem child. He is absent without notice. Fujishiro Sensei said. No, no, no. He was there in the morning. Kido said. Tell me step by step. What happened? Fujishiro Sensei said. The two of them told Sayuri Fujishiro about what happened this morning. Fujishiro's expression became increasingly bitter. The rest of the teachers were listening in on what was going on, but by that time Cookie and the others had arrived. However, Kido and the others didn't even notice. Is that why he is not here today? Still, you're lucky it was only a mistake. If it had developed into something more serious, we would have had to get him expelled. Fujishiro Sensei said. It's all my fault. He didn't do anything wrong. Mikumo said. Even more so then. If he was proven to be innocent, you guys would have been in trouble. Fujishiro Sensei said. Sensei, what should I do? Do you have any idea where he is? Mikumo said. If that's the case, I'll cancel the absence without notice, but I haven't heard from him either. Maybe Yuri Kokono has heard something, Fujikawa Sensei said. Kokono, so he is Yuri Kokono's brother. Kido said. Mitsuki, let's go. Mikumo said. Wait, wait, wait. Don't be impatient, I'll call Yuri-san to come here. Fujishiro Sensei The unexpected situation that suddenly arose further deepened the confusion. Mitsuki, Kido Point of View This is not good, this is not good, this is not good. When was the last time I had felt such a sense of panic? No, it might be the first time in my life. A vague sense of anxiety swirled in my chest. At lunchtime, I went to his class to make a formal apology. I remembered his face in my memory to look in the list and found out that his class was 1B. His name was Yakido Kokono. I couldn't get his last words out of my ears. My heart clutched at the fear that I had done something terrible. I can feel my body trembling, wondering if I've distorted and twisted his sense of justice, if I did then I did something irreparable. Although I was the president of the student council, I should not have harmed the students without protecting them. I've always believed in justice, I've always tried to be fair and just. At some point, people began to gather around me, and they began to appreciate me, and now I was being nominated for the position of student council president. However, I've only carried out the way of life and justice that I believe in. As a result, I am standing here now. But for the first time, I felt my justice being shaken. I am amazed at how vulnerable my position is. Fear that my justice may have destroyed someone else's justice. He has done nothing wrong. His actions are justice itself. I don't think I acted wrongly either. If the same thing had happened to me, I would have done the same thing without hesitation. Still, it is my fault and sin that I was not thoughtful enough, that I did not listen, that I was narrow-minded, and that I unilaterally hurt him. I have to pay for that. Otherwise, I will never be able to act according to my own justice again. 
My justice must not distort anyone else's justice. He didn't come to school today. It's my fault, of course. It's because I hurt him. What's he doing now? Is he in pain? Is he in despair? Does he have a hatred toward me as a person? I'm afraid. I'm afraid to see him. Still, I asked him to. Yumi Makumo point of view. No one will help me. No one will look at me. There is no prince in this world who will rescue me, reality told me so. Until Mitsuki arrived, I was being groped by an unknown person. The hands that had been touching my buttocks at first gradually became more and more extreme. The hand that had been on my skirt was now inside my skirt, and the hand that had been on my underwear was now inside my underwear, as if he was enjoying the sight of me trembling. It was an unpleasant feeling of direct skin contact. I hate. Dirty. Scary man. Someone please help me. Said. If I had been able to raise my voice like that, I would not have been in this situation. They always ridicule me for being a coward. Before I knew it, I had developed a mild distrust of men, and I couldn't speak well with the opposite sex. Even so, I had no choice but to escape from reality, hoping that somewhere, like in a shoujo manga, a prince would come to my rescue. Mitsuki caught the person who had been molesting me. It was a student from the same school. It was weird that such a person was in the same high school. I was filled with fear. What should I do? I might be too scared to go to school. But he wasn't the culprit. It was easy to remember if I kept my cool. It was just as I was told, there was no one in school clothes around me. The hand that was touching me was big and burly. It was an adult's hand. It couldn't have been him. I knew that better than anyone. I should have told Mitsuki right away. That it wasn't him, that it was someone else who was touching me. He was trying to help me. How could I have done that? He was in this world too. A prince who wanted to save me. Looking back, my feelings toward him had changed drastically. I didn't feel disgust or fear. In fact, it was the opposite. I wanted to talk to him more, to know him better. Such feelings. I don't really know what it is yet. But that's why I felt regret for the stupidity of my actions towards him. I need to apologize. When I headed to class with Mitsuki, he hadn't come to school. He was on the train wearing his uniform, the only reason he hadn't come was because of us. My bad feeling was getting worse and worse, he said he would not help us anymore. I don't want to think that he meant it. But that look in his eyes. Yuri Koko no point of view. What have you done to him? Yuri said. Yuri-san, calm down. Can't you get in contact with Yukito Kuen? Sensei said. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Yuri said. Don't you guys go to school together? Sensei said. He went to his aunt's house yesterday and slept there. Oh, God. Yuri said. I was furious. I was furious at the stupid upperclassmen. What kind of student council president is this? I can't believe this person is the student council president. It's happening again. Someone is going to hurt him again, just like I did. As if I'm repeating myself again. I hurriedly made a phone call. If it's from me, he is going to answer it. After a few rings, the call was easily connected without my worry. Yakido, where are you? Yuri said. The ocean? Yuki said. Wait a minute, the ocean? Yuri said. The surrounding area starts to panic. That's natural, it's not a place to skip school. Because of the circumstances, it creates an unpleasant imagination. I'm sure you're not thinking of throwing yourself into the ocean, are you? 
Yuri said. I could clearly feel the tension in the staff room. It wasn't just the homeroom teacher, Fujishiro. The other teachers were also watching the situation with bated breaths. Ha 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 ha, you're funny. Yuki said. This is not a laughing matter. Yuri said. I can't find what I have lost, so I'd better get going. I have a souvenir for you. Yuki said. What souvenir? How far are you really? Yuri said. I'm a problem child, so this is nothing. Yuki said. What do you mean, problem child? You haven't done anything wrong. Yuri said. Problem child. I'm not sure if I hurt him too. Fujishiro Sensei said. I don't have time to worry about it right now when Sayuri Fujishiro, his homeroom teacher, is mumbling about something. After all, the International Exhibition Hall is only open during the Bon and New Year holidays. Yuki said. What are you talking about? Anyway, I heard what happened. Are you sure you'll be okay? Are you sure you're coming back? Yuri said. Just wait for me in high school. I'll try not to bother you anymore. Yuki said. High school? Wait. What do you mean? Could it be that you, Yuri said. It's too early to leave now. Yuki said. What? I knew it. That's not what I meant. Yuri said. Okay, I'm hanging up now. Yuki said. The phone was hung up, I was in a daze. I don't believe that even now. Oh, hey, Yuri-san. You seem to be in a panic, are you all right? He is leaving now. Yuri said. Ah, oh, I see. He said he is going home. I think he will come to school tomorrow as usual. Why don't we wait until tomorrow to hear what he has to say? There's nothing more I can do for you today. Yuri said. Yuri, I'm really sorry. Kido said. I'm sorry. Mikumo said. I will never forgive either of you. Yuri said. I left the staff room without a second glance. There are also the faces of Yukito's classmates, I couldn't hear what they were saying anymore. The last words my brother had said ruminated in my brain. Just as I thought. Looking at his attitude, I had a hunch that such a day would come. I still remember those words. The feeling that lingers in my heart. The exhausted tone in his voice and the words that leaked out. The words that I let out a little bit during the conversation we just had. It's extremely rare for him to reveal even the slightest bit of his true feelings. That's how much he must have felt about today's events. He had asked me to wait for him during high school. If that was the case, the time limit was only three years until graduation. After that, it would probably be too late. I have to do it, I have to. The familiar face, Hinagi Suzurikawa. My brother was getting better by interacting with her, I was relieved. I thought I could trust her. But then I noticed that my brother had returned to normal. No, he has gotten worse. And his childhood friend, who should have always been next to him, was gone. He was playing basketball to forget about her, and now a woman named Shirori Kamashiro was cuddling up to my brother. They were slowly getting to know each other. I had hoped that maybe she would be the one, but she had also hurt my brother as much as she could and was gone. I didn't expect the student council president to join my brother's traumatic race, but I wondered why all these women, including me, gathered around him. What my brother needs is not someone to hurt him. I can't trust anyone anymore. I don't trust anyone anymore. It has to be me. I made up my mind and started walking towards the classroom.